The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 493 Returning the Favor. Shinespark stepped confidently into the tavern, disguised completely in gleaming white and gold armor, projecting the certainty that only a pony who had been leading for their entire adult life could exude. She belonged in that tavern, not by rank or class or time spent there, but because she decreed it, and conversation died in a ripple of silence and whispers around her. A door banged in the distance, and the only creatures who didn't stop what they were doing were two unicorns and a griffin blocking up a pair of smashed holes in the windows. Moments later, a griffin in a tweed suit with an incredibly slick crest stepped out of a back room strolling up and giving her an oily, appreciative smile. Well, someone important, he greeted, giving a too cordial smile and stepping around a melting stack of ice protruding from the ground. Thank you for blessing my humble establishment with your exalted presence, your eminence. I trust you're here for the obvious reason. He gave the ice a fearsome scowl. If someone who does things like that isn't a criminal of the highest notoriety, they should swiftly become one. I'm just looking for some pony, Shinespark interrupted, worried that she was about to get patronized for that end. As much as she was trying to look important, her level of success was almost startling. Two ponies, both mares, a yellow earth pony who can make ice with her hooves, and a Cerosian with a green mane who was with her. Is that who did this? Before the greasy owner could answer, a pegasus who looked like he'd seen better days peered over a bench, eyes widening. N no way, he stammered, straightening up. I know you! You came all the way from Anridge with her? Uh, are you hunting valet or in league with her? Tell me! Shinespark winced internally. Of course someone recognized her. But before she could act, the bar owner threw the pegasus a cutthroat smile, telling him to mind his own business. Of course, of course it was, he insisted, waving a wing at the broken windows. Everyone will tell you that description matches perfectly. Can you tell me where they went, Shinespark pressed. The sleazy owner drooped. Only guesses, your eminence. They were consorting with another group of patrons who started their business here only a week ago. Good, law-abiding sailors, every one of them. It would be terrible if anything happened to them as a result of bad business. Shinespark frowned beneath her visor, certain there was a code within his words that only certain ponies would know. She wished she had Valet's danger sense, but had to rely on her own abilities. Very terrible, she agreed. Where would they have gone? What? The owner looked mock offended. You don't think it's my business to pry into my customers' affairs, do you? This is a respectable establishment, your eminence. He sidled closer, whispering. But just between you and me, the crew were all flyers, so they would certainly have anchored offshore. Mega Shiva aid your investigation. Thank you for your help, sir, Griffin, Scheinberg acknowledged, stepping back and bowing. I'll leave you to your business, then. She turned and left, confidently not checking over her shoulder until she was outside. That owner thought he had played her for a fool, she could tell without a doubt, but Valet and Puddles had been there, and recently, too. She was closing in. They had to be nearby. How are you feeling now? Maple murmured, still sitting in bed and holding Valet against her. Ugh, don't make me think about it, Valet grumbled, tucked close against her. Just gonna have to get up again tomorrow and be Valet again and deal with this and that and everything. Let me keep pretending a little while longer. Five more minutes. It's not pretending, Maple gently insisted. Your friends really are here for you. I promise. Oh, yeah? You think Berta would be chill with it if I dumped all this and acted like this to him? Maple sighed into Valet's mane. Different friends can trust each other with different things. Yes, maybe you couldn't have been this open and vulnerable with Slipstream or Gerardo, but it doesn't mean they don't want the best for you. But I'm here for you, and you can always let down your guard like this around me. Nothing will happen to you here. I promise. Yeah. Lay clicked her tongue against the roof of her mouth. Love you too, Mom. Maple smiled and shook her head. I might be older than you, but you're an adult filet. I'm not babying you. You can call me Iron Flags, but not that. Heh. <laughs> chuckled against her. You sure? 
You totally adopted Starlight too. Seriously, you just have a thing for trying to take care of sad ponies or something. Besides, I really want to say I love you, but not make it weird. You can love someone platonically, Valet, Maple hummed. I love you too. And Starlight is... Well, she needed someone, and I needed someone to need. It isn't like I'll ever have children of my own anymore, but I have her, and I'm glad for it. Valet looked uncertainly aside. You think she feels the same way? Oh, I'm sure she does. And Maple gave a warm little smile. She needs me. I need her. It works out perfectly for each other. Are you sure about that? Valet asked hesitantly. Maple's breathing stiffened. You think something different? Well, I mean, it's like... Uh, Valet fidgeted. Not exactly the greatest expert on parents and kids stuff here, you know? Probably super bad with kids even, but you were totally muttering me here, right? The whole, I'm here for you, you don't have to worry about a thing deal? Yeah? It's what Willow always did for me, Maple replied. Me and Amber thought of her as a big sister more than anything, but she did take care of us like that whenever we needed it. Both as foals, and later when I got depressed. Why? Valet frowned, pulling back so she could look at Maple. Because that's super not an equal relationship, you know? Like, the opposite of what you and Starlight have going on. I mean, you just said you both need each other, and it's all back and forth and stuff. But like, what you're trying to do for me right now isn't that at all. Being here, taking care of anything that worries me, keeping me safe, even though that's totally supposed to be my job for you. You know? Maple's breath caught in her throat. What do you mean? Look, eh, bananas. Valet set up further, then skewed it in the bed and turned around so she and Maple were side by side, leaning on each other. You're super awesome, Iron Flanks, and I do feel better. Not a hundred percent, but you were right. I needed that. Just a bit of time to feel like I didn't have to worry about a thing. And I'm totally not doing this because I feel like I've got a favor to repay or anything. You're right. I'm an adult. Even if I need a break from them, I do have responsibilities and stuff to worry about. But Starlet is, like, actually really a filly, and she totally does need someone to do that for her. Maybe not nonstop all the time, because she's gotta grow up, but... <sighs> she trailed off and sighed. Look, I ran into her up on the deck when I showed up. She looked super stressed. And just now, when I was thinking, I'm like, how often do you see her playing with stuff? She reads books every now and then to pass the time, but that's not the same. Especially since they're usually nonfiction. And especially, how often do you see her smile? Bananas, I'm not even sure what that looks like. Like, maybe I needed a break? Just a little to get some ground beneath me? She's a kid. She shouldn't even know what kind of stuff adults need breaks from. So the last thing I want to do after you were so awesome to me is criticize your parenting, but when you say she needs you, yeah, she totally does. But then when you say you need her, being there for us shouldn't be the kind of thing that weighs on her. Not when we're constantly getting into life and death danger and high political drama and all that. And... Again, the last thing I want to do is make you sad, but I don't know. Thanks. And sorry, just thinking aloud here. Maple couldn't answer, left staring at the wall. I... no. Valet, that's what... you think... have I? She looked over in horror, meeting Valet's green eyes. You meant it, didn't you? You know what? Uh, Valet frowned at her. I seriously shouldn't have brought that up right then, but now I've got a favor to return. Stop worrying. She reached out and tried to pull Maple against her, just like Maple had been doing moments ago, but Maple pushed back, trying to stand. I need to go talk to her, Maple insisted, wobbling against the bed's deep cushiness. Valet, come on. Wait! Really, please! Valet grabbed her shoulder with a forehoof. Maple, hang on. Starlet cares about you super hard, and I don't need one bit of experience to tell that if you run up blubbering about having not done enough for her, she'll take it exactly the opposite way and... Wait! Maple stopped, staring at her from the edge of the bed and waiting for her to say more. Please, Valet insisted. You just got me to sit down and talk about some seriously painful stuff with you, okay? 
trust me here and slow down. Can we please, please talk about this? I don't even know if what I noticed was right. I was just thinking aloud. Maple sagged, slipping partway out of the bed by gravity alone. Do you think Starlight noticed? Noticed what? That you care about everyone ever? Valet pulled her partway back in. Starlight probably thinks her life is normal or something, and she totally cares about you, so wait a bit. First, let me apologize if I freaked you out, and second, let's talk this through. Please? Don't apologize, Maple sighed, relenting and settling back in. I never thought about exactly how to parent beyond doing what came instinctively. If I was doing something wrong, I, I needed to know. Bananas, Valet patted her on the back. Well, I'll be here all night. Let's keep talking. End of chapter 493